Hello there, my dear friends. Uh, it is now uh, 15 minutes past 6 o'clock, uh, January 2, 2023, and Happy New Year to all of you. I have been wanting to upload this uh, uh, most beautiful remedial law, taxation and legal ethics, since uh, December 31, but uh, you know, there have been a lot of uh, things that I needed to uh, to modify because I, I am just copying the format of the previous slides and was migrating my questions and answers on remedial law here in our slide. I'd like to uh, really uh, greet you happy, happy new year. And uh, a number of you have been uh, watching uh, my YouTubes for quite a while. And I'd like to thank you. Umabot tayo ng 2023. Malakas pa tayo. <clears throat> May konting sipon-sipon lang. But uh, everything is okay. Uh, my College of Law at the University of Manila is struggling. But uh, I already fielded my second wave of... Uh, bar candidates in the November 2022 bar examination. And so that therefore I would be, a, I will not be surprised if uh, several of them have been already watching the four uh, modules that I already uploaded. The first one was in commercial law. <coughs> the second one was in labor. The third one is very exciting in criminal law. And this would be the, uh, I guess, the fourth one. The criminal law uh, suggested answer seems to be the more popular one. And I'm very happy because uh, I have never been uh, recognized as, a, uh, what do you call this, uh, as a proponent of criminal law. But uh, among us... Uh, Criminal law is one of my strongest subjects and uh, obviously even in my practice I have a number of criminal cases. The cases where, I mean the, the field where I was supposed to be strong at commercial law and taxation. I don't have uh, se several cases there, especially in taxation, where uh, that is being cornered by the big uh, CPA firms uh, uh, assisted by their own legal uh, staff. You know, but uh, that's one of the areas where I am very strong, especially in my lectures. Now, I would just like to help you out because remedial law has 27 questions. As you know, it was uh, given in the morning and then another round in the afternoon. And so the totality of the questions is 27. And so this can be a relatively long uh, uh, drive for you, if I may use that word. And I would therefore suggest that you handle this in four modules. And how do you do it? Well, let's look, take a look at the coverage of uh, remedial law. And you have here the modules uh, that is all over the uh, course syllabus. No? Uh, in criminal law was given, and there were three problems in criminal law. Civil, uh, oh, I'm sorry, not criminal law. Criminal procedure, I stand corrected, has three questions. And then civil procedure expectedly has five questions. Evidence is three questions. There is one question on provi provisional remedies and two questions on special civil action. Two questions on special proceedings. My God, this is shocking to me. They had eight questions in appeal. And uh, if we compare this with the objective of uh, last year's uh, chairman, uh, Justice Leonin, this is not an entry level for, for, for lawyers who are starting their uh, career. I don't know that they will reach the portion of appeal. Uh, you know, trials would probably last for two to three years. And uh, for them to suddenly be an expert in appeal in the bar examination would be a mismatch in the requirement. You know, I, I just wanted to express that. Uh, I, I do uh, appreciate the approach of uh, uh, Justice Leonin to offer questions that are earmarked to, as an entry level for young new lawyers. You know. Well, 
the, there was a tax remedy uh, involving real property tax. Again, the uh, subject matter of the tax remedy was not as extensive. Uh, it would have been at least uh, in the area sana, of income tax. You know. And then uh, there were two questions on ethics. Now, I, this is a very beautiful uh, roadmap for you, or if you would like to say a circle for you. So when you go through listening uh, our dovetail, and I have, uh, except for this opening piece, I normally don't have so many commentaries in between. I, I go straight to the point. But uh, no matter what, if you uh, watch uh, this uh, presentation straightforward, you probably will not be able to be effectively uh, absorbing, you know. Uh, now, more so because criminal procedure and civil procedure with eight questions would be coming in very strongly. So the way I, I would suggest that you do is uh, on this first space, for example, you go to criminal procedure. And what you do is you click this, you know, and when you click this, the first uh, question comes up, you know, and uh, you go to the answer. Now, uh, if there is no number on this particular logo, that means there is a second slide on criminal procedure. So you just click that, you no, know, and then you click the answer. And then uh, when you're done with this, you click that again. Then you notice there is a little change of na na a tree in the logo. That means this is the third and last one question in criminal procedure, and there are only three. So what you do now is after you go to the three questions in criminal procedure, you can click this one, and you're back to the roadmap. And so this, you can do it by sequential. You go to civil procedure, you click this again, and it goes to the first slide on civil procedure that talks about substituted service, the summons. And then uh, once you're able to get through this, you again click and you go to the second question, which is question number three, in the motion to dismiss and you have the suggested answer. Then you click again, you go to question four, personal versus courier service. And then you again click, you know, you'll have, of course, the answers there in yellow. The, the, the questions are in white uh, fonts. And the suggested answers are in yellow fonts. And the uh, this one, you don't have to really write this if you were uh, going to the bar. But this is for those of you who would like to validate uh, Binobola, but I need to be scared of this answer. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, I don't go to this because this will be uh, there uh, in YouTube for a long, long time. And you will have a series of uh, bar candidates, law students, who are so, you know, well-versed with their uh, codal provisions and their, uh, what they call this, uh, jurisprudence. And then you will also have lawyers who would probably go to this. Some of them may be teaching and so they'll go to this. That's why I will not gamble putting uh, all of this without validating the, uh, the the sources, you know, so I do. And that is what uh, took me about almost two months, because November, then December. Now, I, 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 I took up the last part of the December to upload the three, and this is now the, the fourth one. Okay, and so you click again, civil procedure, you know, you get again the, uh, the question and answer number five, and then when you go into this, again you notice uh, this is the little modification in the logo of civil procedure, there's a number there. That means this is the fifth uh, topic, fifth question on civil procedure. What you can do now is, after you're done with this, uh, you want to go back to the map, and so you go into uh, that one. And if you want to, uh, you know, uh, go through evidence five, the kapapagod, go ahead and do that, no? But assuming uh, you, you are so excited about going into, ano kaya yung sa appeal? No, this one, this, this particular module, you, you don't have to go to it in cycle like that. No, you can go direct to appeal, and you notice, Appeal suddenly flashes its first question. And it is in the afternoon, part two, number one, and it's talking about the prescriptive period of appeal. And so you can go into that. No, those are the answers. And since you have eight, that's only the first one. 
you go to the second one, you have the question and there you have the answer. And then you have question number three, which is problem four in the afternoon. The two there is the afternoon. Okay, and then you get to problem five, you know, which is also five in the afternoon question on arbitration and deconstruction. This one, uh, you know, to be honest about it, I don't know the answer to this one. I have to do some research. And I don't know that uh, this really belongs to an entry level. How many lawyers will be involved in construction? You know, and uh, how, many, uh, how, how many of them will be involved in this arbitration? So I don't know that this really belongs here. Binigay, eh? Di, I, do not, I am wondering uh, how my candidates from the UM Law answered this. Because we never even talk about this. Uh, masyadong specialty to. And yet entry level binigay. So, talagang ito, chambahan to talaga. So, and then, uh, yun na, yan. So, so, hindi pa lumalabas yung number icon doon, so mayroon pang susunod. Ito, anarment of marriage. Ito, maganda ito. Talagang, ito, this belongs here. No? Uh, at uh, bagong-bago. And we are starting here, uh, essentially, uh, and I'm sorry, this one pala has something to do with yung uh, annulment of judgment after the ito medyo mahirap again hindi hindi entry level ito hindi entry level ito uh, bihira yung uh, ng kliyente na sa siguro sa 20 clients mo ilan dun yung uh, binigyan na pala ng judgment di niya alam tapos nung malaman niya talo siya inabol ka niya uh, normally ewan ko sayang yung oras mo pag-aaralan mo pa yung ganyan but binigay eh. Again, hindi entry-level question type ito. Ito, judgment on appeal. Uh, uh, maganda ito. Kasi ito, pwede ito mangyari. Pwede entry-level. Pero again, medium-sized type. No? Mamaya, pag-usapan natin. Ito, ito expected dito. Yung Rule 45 uh, on Petition for Review on Certiorari uh, as you go up to the uh, from the, tri as the regional trial court to the Court of Appeals, or from the Court of Appeals, you go now for a petition for review and certiorari to the Supreme Court, both under Rule 45. Tapos, compare mo yan sa Rule 65, which is petition for certiorari, just like to do with jurisdiction and grave abuse of discretion. So, yeah. Problem number eight uh, in the afternoon. And then, petition for certiorari versus petition for review and certiorari na naman. Eh, ito na naman, no, inulit, pero this time uh, revolving around the ombudsman. No, again, hindi na naman entry level yung ombudsman. Eh, government uh, eh, employees siya, no, medyo senior level pa, grade 29. Eh, kung ikaw bago kang abogado, kukunin ka ba ng mga yun? No? Kaya, eh, no, these are the questions that I don't know. Prepare questions. But this is question number 8. So if you're done with that, Pindutin mo lang ito, babalik ka lang doon sa roadmap. So, pwede kang mamili. What I'm saying is, as you watch this, pag napanood mo na dalawa o tatlo, napagod ka na, eh, patayin mo na muna. Matulog ka na muna. O, manood ka ng Netflix or, uh, or yung mga pa palabas sa YouTube. Ito, naka-YouTube ka na eh. And then, after siguro one or two hours, bumalik ka na naman dito sa YouTube, mag-login ka na naman doon sa Dean Vizquera Remedial Law. Then, ituloy mo na rito. That is how you handle that. And then, at any time, magsesecond. Sabi mo, ito, hindi ko natapos lahat ito. Tinakuha. So that is the way you handle this kind of presentation. And all of my uh, uploads uh, involving uh, uh, the my suggested answer to the bar exam, this is structured this way. <coughs> the, the last topic that I would be covering, tinatapos ko na, is civil uh, law. Yung civil law, mahaba din. Just like, uh, ang pinakamahaba is remedial law. And I would like to say, in fairness, medyo mahirap ang remedial law. Yun na, dahil nga, hindi entry level yung binigay. Puro mga medyo, mga heavyweight na, siguro, kahit yung mga nagpa-practice, eh, mahirap. Tulad nung construction na uh, uh, industry uh, arbitration, uh, arbitral uh, meeting, parang, masyadong ano masyadong overkill siguro yung examiner noon eh nagpapa ano yun nagpapakaramdam na siya magaling sa sa subject matter na yun pero dapat 
uh, in, in fairness, uh, si, I think, Justice Leonin, uh, kasabay ko itong dalawang ito, no, sa, ano, eh, Judicial and Bar Council, eh. Noong 2012, si Justice Leonin ang kasabay ko sa, uh, ano, sa uh, interview at sa examination. I, I went to the final uh, public interview. Hindi naman tayo na nahuhuli doon. Pero alam na, alam na naman natin ang, ano, eh, ang labanan sa Judicial and Bar Council. Eh. <laughs> Bago pa mag-examination yun sa JBC Technical na Staff, yung IQ, yung ganun. Eh alam na kung sino ang kukunin ng malakan niya. Eh. Oh, pagka hindi lumabas yung bata nila sa JBC uh, uh, shortlist, eh, pauulit lahat yun. Oh, so I already knew that. Anyway, si deserving naman nun, uh, 2012, nominated ako kasama ni Justice Leonin. Kasama kami, patuloy si Justice Karandang yata, if I remember. Uh, we were uh, in the same uh, uh, conference table, apat kami. Halos lahat yata, mga may, may tatak UP Diliman. Ako naman eh, hindi law ng UP Diliman, MBA. Oh, pero UP pa rin. And I don't know that they know that. Kasi sila, siyempre puro UP law. Uh, sabi siguro, sino ba itong pipitsubin na ito? Na UE law lang. Hindi nila alam. I was a professor at UP before I even went uh, to, to law school. So, okay lang. No? And then, uh, I was again back to the... Uh, ito, long shot na ito. ito two years to go before... Uh, Uh, the mandatory retirement. Ayun, sabak ako, 2016. And the uh, interview is new too. Nung panuuri niyo. I, I, have never, I, I am always proud to, uh, to uh, listen to my answers there. Ang pinakamahirap, yung isang nagmamagaling, eh. o, saling pusa lang doon sa panel na yun. E, yung boss niya, yan si Justice Kagiwa, ang boss niya noon sa Malacanang, sa Ligan. Eh, kasabay ko. Piskera ako. So, sinas, kagiwa. No. Eh, so, everybody, all in union, kagiwa will be the one because a eh, classmate ni, ano, ni President Noy. No. Even uh, Tapni, you will see that in the uh, YouTube uh, yeah, start, no, tinapik pa ako, good luck, Brad, sabi niya. Sa loob ko, anong good luck? Talagang good luck ito. Dahil uh, alam na namin, ikaw. No? But, uh, okay. And he's the chairman now here. No? Oh, chairman. So, kung minalas-malas kayo na uh, hindi si Justice Leone nang na-appoint at hindi si Justice Kagiwa, eh, itong kaibigan nyo ito siguro nakalaban nyo sa bar examination. Eh, ewan ko, eh, just like Justice Leone yung kinakatakutan. Siguro kung ako rin na naging uh, chairman ng bar examination, baka nila yung matatakot. Pero again, I, I follow the philosophy ni Justice Leone. The bar examination is not intended to, to flank It is intended to pass, you know, uh, law, law students who will become respectable lawyers. Hindi pa hatchet lawyers yan. Kahit na mga graduate na UP, Ateneo, San Beda, UST, what have you. Pagka naka-outtaking na yan na uh, meron ng uh, uh, role of attorney's number, eh sisimula yan pare-pareho yan, gapang yan. So, of course, lamang yung mga malalaking law firms, uh, they... They, they, what you call this, uh, focus on pirating or, or, or getting all of the top-notch graduates of UP. Medyo lamang sila kasi unang-una, sabihin na natin derechoan, UP, eh, matatalino talaga yan, madaling matuto. Kaya lang, uh, ano natututunan? Eh, mahirap na magsalita. Siguro yung tinatawag na practitioner, ibig sabihin ni Marunong, uh, manalo ng kaso. Hindi dahil sa alam niya yung law, hindi alam niya kung ano dapat gawin. Yan, ang hindi nakukuha ng isang uh, graduate ng outside of this na hindi ismanong sa mga law, law firms, you suffer uh, that kind of experience na lahat na sinasabi mo, lahat na sinulat mo, lahat na sinabit mo, tama naman, nagtataka ka, parang hindi tumatalab. Ano talaga? Uh, those are the realities of life. Iba itong malabanan na ito. Kaya ako enjoy ako dito when we talk about the concept of law. Kasi pagdating mo sa actual practice, eh, yung concept of law, kailangan yun. Pero yun lang ba ang dahilan para mananalo ka? Eh, you pass the bar exam if you are uh, watching this uh, as a law student or a bar review. Eh. When you are a lawyer, you know what I'm talking about. So, simulan na natin. There are 27 questions, ano yan, 3 plus 
uh, 5 is 8 plus uh, 3 is 11, 12, no? 13, 14, 15, 16, no? Tapos plus 8, 24, 25, 26, 27. Uh, mabilis naman tayo mga gano'n, tsaka ako nagpunasalan mo. So, let's start with criminal procedure. Question number one in criminal procedure. Ayan. Kasi may answer na kasi pinasada natin kanina. The first question in criminal procedure is problem number 10 actually in the bar. And it has something to do with the motion to quash an information where the offense charge is missing. Let's take a look. An information for murder was filed against the accused demo in Onyok. It reads, quote, that on or about the 9th of March 2008, in the city of Las Piñas, Philippines, and within the jurisdiction of this honorable court, the above-named accused, conspiring, confederating together, and both of them mutually helping and aiding each other without justifiable motive, with intent to kill and with treachery and abuse of superior strength, did then and there knowingly, unlawfully, and feloniously attack, assault, and use personal violence against one Angel Rosario, by then and there repeatedly hitting and beating his head with a baseball bat, thereby inflicting upon the latter mortal injury which causes death. Contrary to law, the accused filed a motion to quash on the ground that the information does not conform substantially to the prescribed form. What is the is the accused correct? Explain briefly. You know, I I, I always sentimentally remember my father. You know, an intelligence uh, military intelligence officer, and when I was. Uh, I guess in my, in my teenage years in high school, nagkukwentuhan kami and uh, you know, he did not have all the academic honors and medals I have. Pero yung tatay ko talaga matalino eh. Oh. Uh, sabi niya sa akin, anak, in, uh, in the way we handle our uh, military intelligence uh, building up of case, simple lang ang ano namin, ang, ang template, yung... <laughs> yung hinihimahin namin. We simply try to answer the question of what, where, when, why, and how. Pag nasagot mo yun, sabi niya, buwing istorya. And you know, eh, when I was listening to, sa loob-loob ko, eh, ano mahirap doon? What, when, where, why, how? And you know, I just took it inside kasi mahal ko siya, nakikinig ako sa kanya, but sa loob-loob ko, eh, babaw naman lang. But over the years, I have always kept that simple model. And then I finally ended up, for example, being a lawyer and then started looking into all of this information. Ang dami, oh, kasulat, detalyado. Pero essentially, does it answer the issue on due process of law? Because when you are suing a person criminally, you know, due process of law says that he should know what he is, to, uh, you know, what is being prosecuted upon. Ano bang kasalanan niya na may danger siya? No? Meron siyang jeopardy na makukulong, masisintensyan. Basahin niyo yan, sinabi lang. Pero kung ikaw yung nakahabla, ikaw yung si Demo at si Onyok, tanong mo, ano bang kasalanan namin? O, oh, under the revised penal code, ano bang ano namin, nagawa namin? O, oh, wala, hindi sinasabi. Kaya sabi nga eh, confirm substantially, sinabi na lahat except that they are being prosecuted no, for murder. Wala. Hanapin mo dyan. No? Tiyan mo, may death o oh, homicide. Pero merong agra- qualifying aggravating circumstances. May treachery, abuse of superior strength, merong pang conspiracy. Lahat nandyan. Pero hindi sinabi sa kanila kung anong hinahabla. Kaya is the accused correct in moving for to cause the moon? The answer is yes. Due process of law. Hindi niya alam kung Eh, para sa ano, ano, ano ba ang kasalanan namin? Okay. So, the suggested answer. Yes, the accused, make sure that your your answer is responsive to the question. Ang tagot, huwag kang sasagot ng base sa iniisip mong tanong. Hindi, basahin mo. Is the accused correct? Correct about what? That he wants to uh, move to quash, no? Motion to dismiss on the ground that the information does not 
uh, conform substantially. So the, uh, the question is, is the axios correct in saying na dapat motion to quash dismiss? Your answer is yes. The accused is correct that the information does not conform substantially to the prescribed form. You see, repeated, the, the, you, you, you just reiterated your answer uh, to the question. Then it says, there is no designation of the offense being charged. As given by the statute, no acts constituting the offense and no qualifying and aggravating circumstances. Wala. O, oh, dapat sinabi, aggravated. Sinabi lang yung ano, intent to kill treachery, pero dapat sinabi yun. Therefore, yun, yun, no? uh, being prosecuted for murder with treachery, you know, uh, evident permutation, lahat yun, as qualifying, aggravating sika. Then, alam mo na kung nung hinahabla sa'yo. Now, this is consistent with sections 4, 6, and 8 of Rule 110 in the prosecution offenses under the revised rules of criminal procedure. Simple lang, di ba, no? Haba-haba. Maraming ganyan. At ibig sabihin, yung mga nagiging piskal, eh, kulang din sa hasa, no? Na dapat, simple-simple lang yung ano, yung, yung diretso ka agad nila, ano yung hinahabla. Tapos saka na lang ibigay yung tunda. Ayan, tama yan. Standard yan, done or about the, the date. Saan? Para makuha yung jurisdiction. No? Ayan sinabi jurisdiction. Oh, the above name accused, ayun, the name sila, conspiring and seen together. Oh, mm. Tapos sinabi, pero dito, pwede na kagad dinirecho nila. Oh, committed the offense of murder with the aggravating circumstances sir, sir, of treachery. Oh, uh, with, uh, yan na, oh, uh, conspiring and conveying. Yun, pwede na lahat yung mga burloloy na yun. Pero dapat unang-una sabihin kagad kung ano yung kaso. Sabihin kagad uh, uh, is being uh, is, is guilty of murder with the qualifying under yun nakalagay oh, yung provision of the uh, provision of the revised penal code or oh, if it's prosecuted under a special law. Okay. Second question in criminal procedure is problem 11. And it has something to do during the arraignment on the plea of guilty to capital offense and then the prosecution to prove guilt. Question. Cain was indicted under an information charging him with the crime of murder. Yeah. He was caught by the police in fraglante delicto as the incident happened in a public place with many witnesses present. Videos of the incident were also posted online which the judge was able to watch. During his arraignment, Cain pleaded guilty to the say, to the crime charge. Sabi niya, oh, guilty or not guilty or murder? Guilty po, Your Honor. The regional trial court accepted the plea because it was made voluntarily and with full understanding of the consequences. The RTC directed the prosecution to present evidence to prove Cain's guilt. However, the prosecution failed to present any evidence during the scheduled hearings. The RTC then ruled and found Cain guilty beyond reasonable doubt based solely on his plea of guilt. Okay. Ano ba requirement ng uh, rules of court on criminal procedure no? in order to answer was Cain uh, conviction proper? Ang sagot natin. No, Cain's conviction is not proper. The court needed to conduct a searching inquiry into the voluntariness and full comprehension of the consequences of his plea. E for example, sina binasaan siya ng murder, o guilty ka ba o hindi, e malay mo kung naintindihan niya implication ng murder, o inaamin niya, o inaamin ko, pinatay ko, o, e, an, bakit naging murder but hindi homicide? He may not be uh, conversant with that. Doon dapat, yung judge normally masipag. Kung magaling, ipapaliwanan sa niya. Alam mo ba na inaamin mong murder? Ang ibig sabihin ng murder, hindi lang pinatay mo, kasi kung pinatay mo homicide, pero dinagdagan mo pa yung, ano, yung bigat ng pagkakapatay mo na pinag-isipan mo yan, evident premeditation, pinlano mo yan. Tapos, hindi mo siya binigyan ng pagkakataon na lumaban, tinraidor mo siya, kaya treachery. Ginamita mo pa ng, ano, ng strength, meron ka pang hawak na barel o kutsilyo. Lahat ba yan nangyari? Oh. Yun, malinaw dapat i-explain mo sa ano. Oh. And then, 
you are to required, the, the prosecution is required to prove Cain's guilt and the presence of the degree of culpability. Kailangan, no, hindi lang yung act of killing which is homicide. To move it to murder, ito very, ano, lalo na sa treachery. The Supreme Court said that the treachery should be specifically described in the information. Paano naging treachery? No? Dapat may mention doon that uh, uh, when the attack was made on the victim, that uh, the uh, accused purposefully did not give him the opportunity to defend himself or to re to 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 uh, to, to uh, react and endanger the life also of the attacker no kailangan yun yun ang latest dati dati na dalawang theory pagkara na banggit mo na yung treachery sabi sa isang school to yung luma pwede na raw yun no now later on the, the latest decision of the supreme court is hindi kapag ka murder yan no whether uh, merong admission of guilt or wala the the uh, treachery should be described very clearly in the information. Dapat sa information, ha? At yun ang papatunayan. Kasi pag sinabi mo treachery, at nila mo sa information, binibigyan mo ng warning as part of due process of law, yung akusado na ipapatunayan ko to, no? Na kaya yan, yung homicide mo na pinatay mo, papanik yan sa murder dahil patutunayan ko to yung ginawa mo under the concept of treachery. So here, the prosecution needed to prove Cain's guilt and the precise degree of culpability, notably the qualifying aggravating circumstances for murder and any attendant mitigating circumstances. So dito, kapag ka nasintensya ng murder si, ano, si uh, Cain, there can be a motion to, ano, motion for reconsideration and then uh, appeal under uh, Rule 45 before the Court of Appeals no? para ma-question na hindi ho murder yan, hindi ho napatunayan yung qualifying aggravating circumstances. Okay? So that is the second problem. Ito, pwede ito, entry level ito although medyo mahirap-hirap na yan. Yung bagong abogado lumalaban na ng bakbaka na medyo maano na yung mga concept. Eh, ito, yung mga magagaling na law students na pumasa sa bar yan, pwede dyan. Lalo na ngayon, napapanood na nila ito. Ganun pala yun. The third question on criminal procedure, and that is the last one, is something to do with the cyber crime warrants. Ang tanong, number 12 in the bar exam, is enumerate and describe three warrants that may be issued by the courts pursuant to the rule on cyber crime warrants. Again, I have some reservation. Eh, ilan ba yung hahawakan cyber crime cases ng bagong abogado? Kaya to me, this is to, to me eh, the second or third uh, priority lang sana. Pero binigay eh. So, dapat may sagot tayo. The three warrants under the rule on cybercrime warrants include an order in writing issued in the name of the people of the Philippines signed by a judge upon application of law enforcement authorities authorizing the latter, number one, a warrant to disclose computer data, WDCD, which is to issue an order to disclose and accordingly require any person or service provider to disclose or submit subscribers' information, traffic data, or relevant data in his or her or its possession or control. The second warrant is warrant to intercept computer data, WICD, to carry out any or all of the following activities under this warrant. A. Listening to, recording, monitoring, or surveillance of the content of communications, including procuring of the content of computer data, either directly through access and use of a computer system or indirectly to the use of electronic eavesdropping or tapping devices, at the same time that the communication is occurring. To run, to, to run this parallel to ordinary evidences, uh, ordinary evidences that should have been covered by the so-called search warrant. Pag kinuha mo yan, ng ano mo, kinuha mo, wala kang search warrant, unlawful yung, ano, yung evidence, no? inadmissible in evidence. Ganon din ito, electronic lang. Oh, so pag nakikinig, yun, nakikinig, nagmomonitor, nag-ano, <laughs> kumuha ng USB, 
you know, pinairate yung data, inadmissible in evidence yun kung walang warrant to intercept computer data. And finally, the third warrant is warrant to search, seize, and examine computer data. To search the particular place for items to be seized and or examined. So, yeah, and your honor, we apply that we enter that office. There, is, there are three uh, uh, desktops there and uh, another three laptops, which we will uh, describe ngayon kung ano yung gusto makita ng information. So, labas ng warrant to search, seize, and examine computer data. This is under the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012, Republic Act 10175, the rules on cybercrime warrants, and issued under Administrative uh, Matter Number 171103 of the Supreme Court on July 3, 2018. <clears throat> so, yun mga kasama ang first three questions in criminal procedure given in the November 2022 bar exams. Pag napagod ka na sa pakikinig sa akin, no? pag kakinlik mo na ito, o gusto mo na muna kumain ng uh, dinner, kain ka na muna. No? Patayin mo na muna yung computer mo, no? or uh, iwan mo na ka ganyan para sa susunod, uh, ikiklik mo to. So natapos ka na, kumain ka na. Tutuloy mo yung panonood mo sa civil procedure. Okay, let's take a look. Sa civil procedure, no? question number two in the bar, has something to do with the uh, serving of the summons. Oh, siyempre, kung yan ay civil procedure, due process, para meron yung court, merong uh, jurisdiction over the person, sasabihin niya, no, no, oy, merong habla sa'yo dito at sumagot ka rito, ha? at magpakita ka sa akin para ano, uh, sagutin mo yung uh, habla sa'yo. Yun ang summons sa tinatawag. Kung paano sineserve yun? Ayan. Question now. Asya Inc. sued Kobe, a resident of Bukidnon. To serve summons, the sheriff waited in the lobby of Makati Hotel where Kobe stays whenever he is in Manila. The sheriff failed to serve the summons because Kobe left the hotel for an emergency. Hours later, the sheriff asked the front desk about Kobe's whereabouts and his room number. The hotel refused to disclose on grounds of confidentiality. The sheriff tried again the next day, but Kobe was in a conference until midnight. So the following day, the sheriff left the summons and a copy of the complaint with a Manila Hotel's chief security officer, even as the CSO refused because Kobe had already checked out by then. The sheriff thereafter filed his return stating the dates, times, and places of his attempts, the name of the CSO, and the fact that the complaint was served with the summons. When Kobe did not file an answer, Asha moved to declare him in default. Was there a valid substituted service of summons? Explain. Nagkaroon ng default kasi hindi siya, you know, the, this, the summons will tell him to appear in court on a particular day. Hindi siya sumagot, hindi rin siya nagpakita. So ngayon, nag-move yung kalaban na in default kaya hindi sumasagot. Now, so, uh, the, the, the default will depend upon whether he actually received the summons together with the attached complaint. No? Yan ang question. Natanggap ba niya? Kung hindi niya natanggap, the court has no jurisdiction over him. So there cannot be any default. Dahil default lang siya. Kung alam niya, dapat magpunta siya, pero hindi siya nagpunta. But if he was not properly uh, uh, served, you know, uh, the summons, then hindi, hindi, tuto, hindi na ano, wala siyang default. The answer, was there a valid substituted service of summons? No, there was no valid substituted service of summons. Substituted service requires that the place where the summons is served is the defendant's current residence or office regular place of business. Makati Hotel is not Kobe's current residence or current place of business. Let me just explain. In the service of summons, the most important truth is personally yung sheriff ibibigay doon sa tao na nakahabla. O oh, sir, eh, ikaw yung si Kobe. Meron ho rito habla sa inyo. Ito yung summons ng korte advising yung may habla sa inyo. Sir, sir, serve ko sa inyo yung, yung notice ng court yung summons. Pakipirmahan lang ho 
At nandito rin ho yung naka-attach na po yung habla sa inyo. Nakalagay po dyan kung kailan kayo dapat magpakita uh, sa korte. Under that particular personal service, then there was already a valid uh, service of summons. The court has already acquired jurisdiction over the person of the uh, respondent. No? Pero kung hindi nakita siya, katulad na nakita doon, dapat sa personal address niya, eh dapat technically sa bukid noon. No? Or kung meron siyang opisina somewhere nearer, no? Cagayan de Oro, whatever you, or sa Maynila meron, dapat doon isa sir. But iiwan to sa tao na normally talaga naman yun ang nandun sa opisina. Like uh, number one, kung merong personal manager, yun, responsible yun. Kung hindi personal manager, yung executive secretary. Number three, yung, ano, yung, yung receptionist. Number four, yung, secure, yung regular security guard. And all of those people's names will have to be indicated in the acknowledgement on the service of summons by the, uh, what they call this, by, by, the, uh, by the sheriff. Okay, third question under civil procedure. Eh, mo, yung summons na naman, yung motion to dismiss, improper service of summons. Okay. Question number three in the bar. Ten days after service of summons, defendant K filed a motion to dismiss the complaint for collection of sum of money against her on the ground of improper service of summons, on the basis of which the court did not acquire jurisdiction over her person. Sabi niya, Hindi ho naman uh, na-serve sa akin in person eh. eh iniwan lang ho doon sa kapitbahay ko eh. Oh. Ah, iniwan sa kapitbahay mo. Eh, they did not meet the requirement na personal service or diniliver sa kanyang residence o sa kanyang opisina doon sa kapitbahay. So, sabi niya, motion to dismiss your honor dahil wala kayong jurisdiction sa akin. If you were the judge, how would you rule? Explain briefly. And then, in effect, yung tao nandun na sa korte, hawak-hawak na niya yung summons na hindi naman, da, hindi naman na-serve sa kanya properly. Pero nakarating sa kanya, okay? So, sa, kung ikaw ang judge, sasabihin mo, eh alam mo na na may kaso sa'yo. Ayan, hawak-hawak mo yung summons. Yung kine-question mo, hindi properly serve. Oh, kumuha nga kayo ng kopya dyan. Isa pang kopya. Oh, ako ngayon na magsaserve sa'yo. Pirmahan mo, natanggap mo. Yan ang tinatawag natin na... Alias summons. Alias summons. Okay. So as the judge, the answer is, as the judge, I shall deny the motion to dismiss solely because of the improper service of summons. Why? Because improper nga, pero natanggap niya eh. So the purpose of due process of law, of informing, letting eh, that person na, uh, ano, uh, si K, na may habla sa kanya, nagawa. Kaya nga nandun siya sa korte. Eh. Oh. So, meron niya jurisdiction ng court. Ito, nakikipag-usap ka na sa akin. Di kinikilala mo na may habla sa'yo. A case should not be dismissed when a defendant personally appears before a court complaining that he had not been validly summoned. That the case filed against him should be dismissed. An alias summons can be actually served on said defendant. Kandahan pa natin. Ha? Dumating si Kay. Sabi niya, Your Honor, Eh, yun yung kapitbahay ko, sinasabi na meron daw ho nagpunta rito ng sheriff na may habla daw ho ako. Oo. Eh, binigyan na ho ako ng kapiranggot na papilang kung saan korte. Kaya po nandito ako. Pero wala akong service of summons. So I moved to dismiss. Law student eh. I moved to dismiss the case, uh, the, the civil action against me. So, ang sagot ng judge. So alam mo na may kaso sa iyo. Oo. Kaya lang hindi hindi ka hindi binigyan ng summons. Pero nandito ka. O ngayon dahil nandito ka, o yun na nga. Di, ilabas nga yung isang kopya ng summons. Oo. O ito, itong kopya ng summons, alya summons ito. Dito ko ngayon i-serve sa iyo. Pirmahan mo. O ngayon may jurisdiction na ako sa iyo. Kasi nandito ka na eh. Ha? Hindi nga si nerve sa bahay mo. Eh dito nagpunta ka. Binigyan kita alya summons. O meron ka na. Huwag ka na magpa-dismiss. Sagutin mo na yung kaso laban sa'yo. Yan ha? Okay? So, these are all the uh, references on this, no? Maraming kasong ganyan, no? Ayun. VJL Florida Transport versus Chiara Commercial, Lingner and Fisher uh, versus Intermediate Appellate Court to 2017. Ito, 1983. 
Ito, Film Life versus uh, Breva in 2004. And this one is Tungho Steel Enterprises versus Tingguan Trading in April 2014. So, nangyari lahat yun. So, hindi pwede yung palusot, ha? Na, chismis lang ako, kaya nagpunta ako dito, eh. Pero wala akong kaso kasi, oh, eh, wala naman service of salmon sa akin, chismis, eh. O hindi pwedeng hearsay yun. <laughs> law, law student, eh, di ba, no? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Very good ka, very good. Oh. Oh. Eh, ngayon, nandito ka na, nakaharap ka sa akin. No, sinasabi ko na, meron kaso sa'yo. Para huwag mo sabihin, wala kang service of salmons. O, oh, eto na yung, say, ano, eto na yung salmons. Eto, alias salmons. Kasi yung original, hindi na-deliver sa'yo. Ito, kopya. O, oh, ako knowledge mo na. O, oh, may kaso ka na, ha? Sagutin mo na yan, ha? O, oh, I'm giving you 15 days to come back here with your answer. Okay. Ganyan ang, ang issue dyan. Ito, I, I, would, I would submit that realistic ito dapat ibigay sa bar examination so that a new lawyer would know how to react on this particular situation. Kaya ko ikaw, KK, nagpunta si KC, oh, galit na galit. Sabi, attorney, mag-file ka ng motion to dismiss kasi wala ka na. Tumawa ka. Siyempre, pag ikaw ay eh, abogado, you should know how your human relations is. O pagsalitay mo, pagsalitay, ayaw mo, eh, marunong eh, law student eh. O fourth year na, kukuha na rin ang bar eh. Kung nire-lecturean ka pa, ganyan, ganun, ganito. O, pagkatapos eh, eh, pasok yung, tama naman ka mo eh, wala naman proper service of salmon yun eh. Ang problema ka mo, nagpunta ka doon. O, pinapirmahan ba sa'yo? O, o yun, alam mo na. <laughs> Kaya nagamot na yung, ano, yung imperfect, uh, yung, yung improper service ka mo. Ano yun. So kung ano, eh, kaya ko namang i-file yung ano mo. Pero siyempre ka ako, sasabihin mo, sisingilin kita ng ano, appearance fee dyan. Dahil lang usapan natin sa bawat kilos ko na may wrong ginawa. You make me work, eh, you have to pay me for my appearance fee by preparing that one. Okay ba sa'yo? O mabuti pa, sagutin na lang natin yung, ano, yung habla para nakatibid ka na. Kasi kung, sumag- kung nag-file ka ng motion to dismiss, eh di-deny lang yun eh. Sinabi na sa'yo, nagpakita nga na eh. Pag dininay yung disasagot din tayo, dalawang gastos mo. Ano? Sagutin na lang natin. At yun, nakatipid yan ng 5,000. O sige, ito. Ganyan, ha? O, another, uh, by, by the way, you're a professional and you're selling your legal services. Salesman ka din. Kaya, the customer is always right. O, parati mong, ano, uh, intindihin yung customer, ba tama siya. And uh, see how you can fit. Kaya nga, dapat magaling ka sa, sa law, eh. Kasi pwede mo sabihin, tama yung sinasabi mo eh. Oh. Pero pag susundin natin yan, ito effect. Ayan. So he will always be right. Gusto mo labanan natin? Lalabanan natin. Oh. Oh. Kasi pwede mo naman labanan. Eh. Pwede mo yung question. Eh. But you know, it will be denied. Ngayon, kung magaling kang abogado, sasabihin mo, hindi deny din yun. Eh. Kasi itong batas. Eh. Pero gusto mo. Oh. Right? Customer is always right. Gusto mo. Sagutin ko. Oh. Ngayon, datagal yan. Siyempre, magsasagutan tayo. Pero ultimately, di deny din yun. Magagalit. Medyo mainis pa sa atin yung, ano, yung judge. Samantala kung meritorious yung case mo, eh, hindi naman siguro ma-antagonize yung judge. Baka sakali, manalo pa tayo. Diba, no? O ano gusto mo? Manalo tayo, ma-dismiss yung kaso, o antagonize yung judge, yung judge at labanan natin. Tapos gagastos ka pa ng mas malaki. You always give your client an option uh, and always explore it from the point of view. No? Anong gusto niya? Ngayon, kung susundin mo yung gusto niya, siyempre, abogado ka, hindi mo naman mamaliin kung hindi ko susundin mo. Pero alam mo na, ultimately, ang kakatunguhan nun is uh, essentially a uh, baliwala din. No? Waste of money. And you, 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 you just have to sell that to me. Ako, madalas, uh, I, I try to do that. No? Ang mahirap ng mga kliyente, masyadong marurunong. Naku, maniwala ka. Pero masayang ka deal. Kasi kung minsan, may na-overlook ka din eh. O, ako may mga, ay, meron nga mga kliyente ako, hindi naman ganun magagaling sa law. Well, I, I try to help them understand the law. Before you know it eh, yung tinuro ko later, tatanong sa attorney, hindi ba dapat eh, ganito yan, dapat yan. O nga, ano, <laughs> natatawa ako kasi ako nagturo sa kanila no Now, sila na ngayon nagpapaalala sa akin na, attorney, hindi naman tama yung ginagawa natin kasi ikaw nagturo sa amin eh. You know, that, that happens ah. Happens to me. No? For example, yung, for example, yung jura. No? Yung acknowledgement. Yung mga ganun. No? Sa judicial affidavit. Yung affidavit ng abogado. Nakalimutan mo kasi 
yung kinopyahan mong dating kaso, hindi mo nagawa, nire-replicate mo yung mali mo. Well, nakikita nila yun. No? And uh, always, ano, always, uh, huwag ka mapipikon. No. Ang matalino ng abogado, hindi na pipikon pagka medyo eh, hindi naman tayo perfect. Pag nakakita ng kliyente natin, lalo na tayo nagturo at kinokorek tayo, purihin mo. Oo. Kasi pag pinuri mo, hindi ka palpak na abogado. No. Dahil nirecognize mo siya, pupuri mo. And therefore, you create a clientele who is very smart, very intelligent, very ano. So ngayon, yung, yung ano mo, yung strength mo as you attend the cases, biglang nag time stand kasi merong yung mga kliyente mo active sila sa pag-iisip hindi ko nag-iisa sa dami ng kaso ng hinahawakan mo ang hirap mag-concentrate pati if you have your clients properly oriented pati yung battle ano pati yung battle legal battle strategy niyo buo sa kanila na naiintindihan na paminsan-minsan mababara ka sa korte eh, ma-overlook ka <clears throat> and then therefore pagka tapos ng hearing siyempre kakain kayo mag magdi-discuss kagad. Ang saya. Hindi chismisa kung hindi pinag-uusapan niyo yung kaso. And so your your client. Ang sarap nito kasi sa dami ng kliyente mo kumisa nakakalimutan mo. Mamaya tatawag na sa attorney. Next week may hearing tayo, meron kang due na ano. Ayo nga pa lang. Your, your your client. Eh kung hindi ko kung kana secretary ko kana staff, di ba? Okay. So, yung alias summons sabi dito. An alias summons is just the name for a summons. When the defendant could not be served the first time. So first time nagpunta yung sheriff, hindi niya na ano, no. Yung se- second time na hahanapin niya, no, either the same summons yun or normally a, a, a true copy, a reproduced copy of the summons. Valid naman yun. Yung, yung hindi original, yun ang tinatawag na alias summons. Okay, alias. Okay. Next, uh, on civil procedure. Problem number four in the bar examination, again, yung service of summons. No? Dalawa kasi yung action. Eh. When you prepare, for example, pleadings, and you file that in court, that is called filing. But you are required to provide a copy to your, opposi- to your opponent, no? especially yung opposing counsel mo, either public prosecutor kung criminal case, or private prosecutor kung meron private prosecutor, or uh, opposing counsel. No? So, Whenever you file a case, a, a, a document, a pleading in court, that is called filing the pleadings. But since you are supposed to give a copy to your opposing counsel, you call that service. So to filing, a service of uh, pleadings or uh, a motion. Now, let's take a look at the problem. Attorney Wu, a newly hired lawyer of a law firm, Book Samurai Express, a duly accredited courier service within the National Capital Region to serve a copy of a motion for a consideration to Attorney Han, counsel for the adverse party whose office is in the city of Manila. Attorney Han moved to deny the motion for failure to contain a written explanation as to why the motion was not served personally. Ako medyo napuwing din ako dito eh. Nasanay kasi ako na meron kang sinasabi doon that uh, let's say uh, affidavit of service of uh, let's say ser- affidavit of service of motion. Okay. Or affidavit of service na lang. Nasabi mo uh, undersigned counsel etc. etc. Um, uh, undertook the service of this uh, ka- uh, in favor of attorney ganon. Uh, opposing counsel or defense counsel by way of, uh, for example, uh, electronic mail or by way of a courier, accredited courier service or by registered mail because of the you know, lack of uh, messengerial staff. Wala ka naman talaga messengerial staff. No. And uh, the uh, distance uh, between, among the, between the offices concerned and the, uh, uh, gr- uh, the the heavy traffic uh, to to, uh, to to serve personal to to undertake personal service yun standard yun dati kasi doon ang requirement personal service ngayon merong alternative 
Pero i-explain mo bakit hindi mo ginawa ang personal service. That was part of the original uh, setup. No, no, ako, abogado, for so many, even now, uh, majority ng mga pleadings ko, mayroong ganun na kalagay. Kung saan, napapadala ko pa rin. Ang question dito is, was the motion for reconsideration properly served? Nagreklamo siya. Sabi niya, wala akong proper service of summons eh. Uh, proper service of the affidavit or yung answer or what have you. Kasi ho, eh, pinadeliver lang, ano, pinakadeliver lang by courier. Hindi man in-explain, wala ako sa ano, affidavit of service. So, ano ho yan, eh, I, I move to dismiss, oh, move to motion to for failure. No? Oh, at the minimum yan, uh, praying for the court to reprimand you. No? So, was the motion for reconsideration proper? No? And then, was what shall be considered as proper service of this motion. Okay, so, kasi meron kang finale eh, na motion for reconsideration. Yun ang finale. Nung pinadala sa kanya, sinasabi niya, hindi, hindi sinerb sa akin ng properly dahil hindi ko in-explain bakit hindi personal service. Bali, wala ho ito. This is a piece of uh, uh, scratch paper. O, ganyan. Ano sagot mo? Yes, the motion for reconsideration, yung pinadala mo sa kanya, was properly served. Motion shall be served personally or by accredited courier. An acceptable mode of service which needs no written explanation as to the service not being done personally. Dati-rati hindi ganyan. Noong nag-issue ng uh, amendment to the rules on uh, civil procedure, isinama na ngayon yung accredited courier. Sinama na na rin yung email. Oh. Of course, kasama pa rin yung registered mail. No? And so that therefore, hindi mo na kailangan ipaliwanag kung hindi, bakit hindi personal service. Kasi dati walang ganun eh. Oh, walang ganun na da- personal service ang, ang requirement. Kaya dapat, explain mo sa affidavit of service. Pero ngayon, you don't only more uh, explain because the rules already allow you to use an accredited courier at the same level as a service uh, by person. Ganun na ngayon. Hindi na kayo na. Letter B. What shall be considered as proof of service of this motion? Ito, natakatawa ako kasi kung minsan nakakalimutan ko rin ito when I file my own uh, uh, papers. You know? The proof of service is the affidavit of attorney who, yung nagpadala, who brought the motion to Samurai Express, the service provider, together with the courier's official receipt of documents tracking number. Sa mga katid, mayroon ka doon, no, affidavit of service. Talagay mo ngayon, the undersigned, uh, the undersigned counsel attorney who no, brought uh, this uh, motion for reconsideration to the uh, accredited courier Samurai Express in order for uh, delivery to attorney Han. Yan. Tapos, pagkaan mo yun, i-attach mo yun doon sa ano, no, na, sama na yun doon sa pinadala mo, no, na it's one of the pages of your uh, pleading. So, mo, a motion for reconsideration or answer or what have you. Isa yun sa mga pages na yun na nakapirma ka na. Tapos, yung resibo, no, you normally will provide for that, yung original, i-attach mo doon sa kopya na i mo sa court. Para yun ang proof. Wala sa yung original nasa court. Dinidikit yun. Kaya kung normally, eh, yung pahinga, pahingi nga ng ano niya, ng, ng paste. Eh normally, parang boy scout ako, may dalawin din akong bote ng paste. Para sabihin sa akin, nung no, ano, no, no, LBC, Sir, uh, i-dedicate. Alam na rin nila eh. Sir, didikit nyo ba ito dun sa, ano, dun sa pulidings? Oo, sabi ko. Uh, sir, ito ho yung tape namin. Hindi, meron akong dalaga. <laughs> Mas malinis. So, yun ganun. Pero pag dinikit mo, wala ka ng kopya. So, normally, magaling yung LBC. Sabi ng LBC, Sir, kailangan mo ba ng another set? Oo ka ako para sa file ko. Oh, hindi magpiprint sila. So, yung original na resibo, naka-attach dun sa ano? Naka-attach dun sa tawag dito sa uh, dun sa court copy. No? Original. Tapos yung kopya ano? Ngayon, kung gusto ka pang bigyan, Tikitan mo na rin yung para sa kalaban mo para wala na siyang iniisip na ano na na baka hindi mo yung yung technicality hanapan ka lang mali. Di wag mo nang bigyan ng pagkakataon na 
Yung mga ganong impertinente, yung mahilig sa detalye, eh, you expect that in actual practice. Kasi pwede mo rin gawin yun, eh. pwede mo rin buisitin, asar ka dun. Kasi mo yun dun. Oo. <coughs> Pero usually sa LBC, dalawa lang. Yung ano, kaya kung gusto mo, pasiros mo, dikit mo rin sa ano mo. Kung, kung yan, eh, pinapaan ko sa kliyente ko, usually, dati may driver ako, who does that, maintindihan, eh, kasakit yung driver ko. Yun, eh, binibig ko ng guideline yung kliyente ko, sila na pinag, pinag, ma, ano, pinagkukurier ko. Okay? So, that is the proof of service, the affidavit, nakalagay dun sa ano mo, one of the uh, pages dun sa pleadings sa simon sa bandang huli. No? Uh, proof of ano, affidavit of uh, service. Oh, yun ang nalagay mo dun, nakadikit busibo. Okay? And then, uh, another question, question number five in the bar on the judgment. No, This is on marriage annulment. Yung question ng res adjudicata. Ito, very tricky. And I, I would not object na pwedeng isama ito sa mga uh, yung mga fresh uh, lawyers na pwedeng mapalaban. So, reading the uh, problem now. Jim Well filed against his wife, Jewel, a petition for the declaration of nullity of their marriage. Alleging as ground, therefore, Jewel's psychological incapacity under Article 36 of the Family Code. The court denied the petition for insufficiency of the evidence presented at the trial. Much later, Jim Will again filed the petition against Jewel for the declaration of nullity of their marriage. The same na, ano, nullity ang hinihingi niya. This time, the basis of Jim Will's petition was the absence of a marriage license at the time their marriage was celebrated. Upon Jewel's motion, the court dismissed the petition on the ground of res judicata by virtue of the judgment in the first suit. Was the denial of the petition on the ground of res judicata proper? Explain briefly. I will be very, un very, very candid with you. When I read this particular problem, my first impression is walang res adjudicata. Kasi the basis of the first uh, 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 petition for declaration of nullity is psychological capacity. Ibang ano yun, ibang dahilan yun. No sumunod, no, final lang naman niya, eh, yung formal requisite, hindi na sunod. So, hiwala yun. Sa akin, hiwala yun. Eh, mali. Ngayon pala, kapag ka nag-file ka ng nullity of marriage, hindi pwedeng piecemeal. Kung nag-file ka nullity of marriage under Article 36, kung meron pang another one, ilagay mo din doon. Nasabihin mo rin na bali wala naman itong ano namin itong kasal namin kasi walang license eh. O. At second, uh, no nagsasama kami, eh do ko pa nakita may psychological incapacity pa. So doon pala sa walang license, hindi na dapat tumuli doon sa ano, pero yun ang una kong final na na-disallow. Pero ngayon, eh res adjudicata na. So ang sagot natin dito is, yes, the denial of the petition for the nullity of marriage based on res adjudicata is proper. A party seeking to enforce a claim, nullity of marriage, yun sabi niya, null, null and void yung aking marriage, legal or equitable, is not at liberty to split up his demands between psychological incapacity then absence of marriage license and prosecute the annulment piecemeal or present only a portion of the grounds upon which a special relief is sought and leave the rest to the presentment in a second suit if the first fails. There would be no end to litigation if such piecemeal presentation is allowed. This is beautiful and bagong-bago, no? This was the case of, uh, hindi lang bagong-bago, Malion versus Alcantara, an October 2006 case. And reiterated also, or, or earlier decided in the case of Perez versus Court of Appeals in July 2005. Dito, ingat kayo. Palagi ko marami sumabit dito. Kasi iba yung reason ng psychological incapacity, ibang concept yun. Tapos pasok naman nung wala palang marriage kasi walang marriage license. At sinasabi ng Supreme Court dito, when you file a nullity of marriage, ilagay mo na lahat nun yung reason Oh, kasi kung kung ipipismil mo yung 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 uh, uh, denial 
uh, on your first uh, petition for nullity will already be applicable to all the subsequent applications that you will have under the principle of press adjudicata. Ganda, no? Oo, eh, ako medyo, medyo na, ano rin ako, minuta din ako dyan. Sabi ko, mali yung ano ko, mali yung first impression ko. So, yan, may jurisprudence na minsanan lang yung ano. Pag nag-file ka ng uh, annulment of marriage, lahat ng, ano, pag kayo na, 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 na disallow, lahat ng reasoning on why it is a voidable marriage will already be covered. Marires adjudicata ka na, no? This is tough. I'm sure may mga sasabit dyan sa kanilang sagot. Next question, which is the last question on civil procedure, has something to do with the execution of judgment by the sheriff. Now, ito napakaganda eh. Problem number nine. Nothing Hill Corporation filed an action for forcible entry against the 10 occupants of a parcel of land it owns. After the summary proceedings, the Municipal Trial Court rendered judgment against the 10 defendants. The defendants filed a notice of appeal but failed to file a supersedious bond to stay the judgment to vacate. Upon Notting Hill's motion, the MTC issued a writ of execution. When Hugh, the sheriff, was implementing the writ of execution, he discovered that the land was occupied by a number of families who all claimed that they were legitimate lessees of the 10 defendants. Julia, one of the lessees, pleaded with Hugh, <coughs> excuse me, beseeching, I'm just a lessee, standing in front of a sheriff, asking him to let me stay in my house. My emotion. May you implement the writ of execution against the lessees. Siyempre, katwira niya. Eh, yung nakapangalan ho dito, yung 10 defendants eh. Eh, yung nakaupa ho, hindi yung 10 defendants. So, hindi ko humalaman kung paano execute. Yun ang magiging katwira ni Sheriff Hugh. Okay. Let's find out. Is Hugh's implementation of the writ of execution? Should he implement? The answer is yes. Sheriff Hugh shall implement the rate of execution against the present occupants who are all squatters from the lawful lessors, unlawful lessors. Merong, ano eh, merong pumasok eh, intruders. Sila nga yung uh, pinapaalis eh. Oo. Ano nangyari pala, pinauupa nila. No? And so, since they have no right to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, what they call this, perform acts of ownership, nagpapaupa. Kung sila'y pinapaalis, wala rin namang, ba, wala rin namang legal effect sa kanila. Y y wala namang legal effect dun sa mga uh, umuupa. Dahil kung squatter is itong, itong defendants, lalong squatter yung pinauupa nila. Oh, so, between the two of them, merong may kaso sila. Pero, in so far as the sheriff is concerned, pasensya na po kayo, yung inuupahan nyo, hindi naman siya authorized dito magpaupa. So kayo ho, wala, lalo kayo walang karapatan. So please pull out. No? The occupants derive no legal right of occupation from their lessors who are ejected as, as likewise squatters in, the, as squatters in the forcible entry case. Hughes' failure to eject said squatters is neglect of duty as a disregard of or a failure to give proper attention to a task expected of an employee. Mahigpit ang Supreme Court ngayon sa mga sheriff. And that was the decision in the case of Lugares versus Villanueva, who is sheriff for of the RTC of Makati, an N-Bank decision na medyo naparusahan siya. No? And that also happened in Portes versus Deputy Provincial Sheriff Tepase, uh, in another case earlier in 1997. So, dapat yung sheriff, execute niya to the letter. Wala siyang discretion. Hindi pwede nakakawa naman. Hindi nakakawa. Siya ang maiipit. Dahil ang trabaho lang niya, execute yung ano. Wala siyang, he does not exercise any, uh, uh, what you call this, uh, discretion. No? The order is ministerial to him. Dapat gawin niya. Kung hindi niya nga, siyempre, tawag siya ng police. No? And, uh, so those are the five uh, problems in civil procedure. 
So, ito mo, eight problems natin, hinihingal na tayo. Medyo pagod na tayo. But uh, we will continue. It is only 20 minutes past seven. So, that's still uh, about, uh, nagsimula tayo mga 16. Nakaka one hour na tayo. Eh, pero eight, eight na problems na yun. Tingnan natin ngayon sa evidence. The first problem on evidence is something to do with admissions and confessions as testimony. Problem number 13 in the bar. Ricky, while driving his Maserati, smashes into the Toyota Vios of Dante. Immediately after the incident, Ricky offers to pay the value of the Toyota Vios. Pare, bayaran ko na lang yung damage sa'yo. Akala niya, okay na yun, no? Dante still sued Ricky criminally for reckless imprudence because Ricky's wayward and speedy driving. During trial, Dante was called as witness to testify on Ricky's offer to compromise as an admission of guilt. Ricky's counsel objected. If you were the judge, how would you rule on the objection? So sabi niya, eh, nag-offer ko siya ng ano, eh, ng, ng, na ba? pagagawa yung kotse ko, hindi eh inamin na ho niyang kasalanan niya. Kaya tutuluyang ho siya. Sabi ng counsel nung ano, nung inaako sa objection, Your Honor, let us take a look at the decision of the court. As the judge, I shall grant the objection The trick is compromise is not an admission of guilt. In quasi-offenses, meaning involving criminal negligence, an offer of compromise is not an implied admission of guilt. So sa mga aksidente, di pa kababayaran mo yung nasira, hindi mo inaamin yung criminal offense of criminal negligence. Eh, when aksidente, eh, syempre, nakadamage ka kahit aksidente, no? an accident will not uh, make you criminally liable for uh, criminal negligence. No? So di pa kang in-offer mong pagagawa, that is not an admission of guilt. No? That is in the case of SMC versus Kalalo, a June 2012 uh, decision of the Supreme Court. The second uh, question on evidence, problem number 14 in the uh, bar exam, has something to do with the CCTV as electronic evidence. The problem reads, Klaus was drinking in front of his rented apartment when he suddenly heard a gunshot which came from inside the apartment owned by Luther. Klaus then saw Igor, a neighbor, going down the stairs and leaving the scene holding a gun. Klaus also witnessed Luther fall from the stairs with blood oozing from his chest. Vanya, Luther's daughter, also rushed to Luther when he fell. During Igor's trial for murder, Vanya testified and presented a flash drive containing a closed-circuit television footages of the scene. Said footages showed a man appearing to be Igor, armed with a gun, proceeding up the stairs and entering Luther's apartment. In the video, the same man was seen hastily leaving the premises. Vanya further testified that she was the one who transferred to the flash drive, the video footages from the barangay owned CCTV that was located outside their apartment. When the footage was played in court and an enlarged screenshot was presented, Vanya identified the shooter as Igor. The defense objected on the ground that Vanya was not the recorder of the video footages. Are the CCTV fo footages admissible in every visible as electronic evidence. Okay, our answer. Yes, the CCTV footages are admissible as electronic evidence. The video ev ev evidence of events, acts or transactions are admissible when one, shown, presented or displayed to the court, and that was done, and identified, explained or authenticated by the person who made the recording or by some other person competent to testify on its accuracy. To prove to the court the genuineness of the video footage or the electronic evidence, it shall be presented from beginning to end with no tampering, alteration, or manipulation. So, maaaring yung direct 
recording nang galing do sa CCTV footage. Ang ginawa niya, kinople lang niya doon sa kanyang USB, no? Ah, uh, sabi rito, uh, transferred to a flash drive. Eh. No? So, galing sa CCTV, kumuha siya ng ganito, no? Nang USB, ni-record niya sa USB. Tapos yung USB, ipinlay do sa court. And so the court says uh, that the, uh, the, uh, the video evidence of events, no? yun nangyari, for as long as it is identified, explained, or authenticated by the person who made the recording. Yun. He did not do the recording itself. It is the device CCTV. No? Or by some other person competent to testify on its accuracy. Sabi niya, nandun ho yung CCTV eh, kinukunan. Kaya yung recording ho no, nirecord ko dito. Oo. So, in-identify niya, na nakita niya yung recording doon sa CCTV. So, to prove to the court, the genuineness of the video footage, sama ho yan kasi nanggaling ho doon. Or the electronic evidence. It, it, dapat buong buo, walang dapat putol. And then, kung ikaw abogado, bantayan mo kung magaling ka sa technology, no? Maaring na makita mo may putol o may alteration. Then you watch for it, no? Nako, uh, sa ngayon, napansin ko yung mga bata, napaka-keen on events, no? I have a number of cases here na mahilig silang kumuha ng, ano, ng picture sa cellphone. Uh, and therefore, ang dami namin mga ebidensya na, uh, na ililipat sa USB, no? at yung, yung recording doon sa cellphone. Eh, pag mahinahin na ka abogado sa, uh, ano, sa, sa technology, hindi mo malaman kung paano gagamitin eh. Eh ako, mabuti naman eh, medyo komportable sa technology. But uh, even with my uh, training, uh, even as a young man, humahabol pa rin ako sa technology. Ito eh. rin recording natin na ito eh, using uh, week time eh. After three months na hindi ko nagagamit, nakalimutan ko nang mag-load. That's the other reason why it took me a little while to get, again be, be back with you. So, so yan ha. So dapat yung CCTV identified yun nung nagpe-present sa korte noong footage. Okay? So, next problem. The problem number three on evidence is problem 15 in the bar. On the original document rule. Ito importante. Kailangan ito ng entry-level abogado kasi nag-iba yung rules. Okay, let us read now. In a case for Stafa, the prosecution offered the photocopy of the acknowledgement receipt signed by the accused showing personal receipt of the sum of money from the private complainant to prove the amount of damage. Accused objected to the offer of the photocopy on the sole ground that it is a mere reproduction of the original in, the, in violation of the original document rule. The court overruled the accused's objection and admitted in evidence the photocopy of the acknowledgement receipt. Did the court err in admitting the photocopy? Now, you watch out for this. Very, very critical, especially for many of the lawyers who came in uh, before the amendment to the rules of court on evidence. Our suggested answer, yes. The court erred in admitting the photocopy of the personal receipt. The original document is needed because the inquiry involves the contents of the receipt, showing that the accused personally received the sum of money through his acknowledgement signature in the original of the receipt and the amount of money which comprises the damage. So the rule is very simple. If what you are presenting is only to prove the existence of a document and the original is not available, one, because it is in the hands of your opponent, ayaw niya ilabas, tinatago niya then you can still present a photocopy, preferably a certified true copy. Pwede yun. Pero, if you are already going inside the document, and it is the contents of the document that is the subject matter of your testimony, 
then you can no longer use the photocopy. You have to produce the original. Alam niya na kung bakit. Kasi, technology-wise, hawak-hawak yung original. No? Tapos si Nerox, tapos si in Snowpake, siningitan ng ano, ng kung ano nung uh, alteration, no? kinamper. Tapos si Nerox ulit. So yung Xerox mukhang ano, malinis. So, yun ang problema, kapag ka ginamit mo yung kopyang yun, hindi mo alam na na-alter. Pero pag sinabi mo, teka, kunin natin yung original, ah, hindi na po pwedeng altered. No? That's the reason why the original document rule comes in when it is the contents of the document that you need to uh, use uh, as, as, your, as part of your testimony. So, dapat na yung original. So, dito, yung acknowledgement receipt, dapat nandun sa ano, nandun sa original ng document. Na original, signature din. Kasi baka dinuktor lang yun. Okay. Kung sirong yun. Pagkatapos na naman, the sum of money. O kasi again, pwede na naman dinuktor yun. So, if it is the original, the real amount is there in the original document. Okay. So, that completes our uh, three questions in evidence. So, let's go back to our roadmap. Ayun po. Nakakatatlo na tayo. At tinan nyo, no? That is now 8 plus 3, 11 na out of 27. So, ang bottleneck natin, yung walong yun. No? Now, let us now move on to the one question in provisional remedies and two questions in special civil action. On provisional remedies, what was asked here is uh, injunction. In so far as nuisance per se abatement is concerned. Ito medyo nahirapan ako ng konti. I have to really deal, uh, dig deeper into uh, jurisprudence. And at the same time, review the concept of the of civil law, uh, the civil code on nuisance. And uh, in uh, one of the uh, questions, I think in political law, nagtanong din ng hawig na question dito eh about nuisance. Oo. Doon naman, uh, I'm trying to recall now, ano yung question ng nuisance doon. No, sa, no. But let us go to this. This is a more serious one. Problem number six in the bar exams. Isol Inc. supplies rotisserie chicken products to the grocery section of shipping malls. It conducts kitchen operations in a refurbished house located in Palanan a residential neighborhood. Rona, a resident of Palanan, filed an action against ISOL Inc. to enjoin the operations of its kitchen on the ground that it emits intolerable odors and violates laws on waste disposal. In the same action, Rona also seeks to have ISOL Inc. business permit revoked because an industrial facility is not allowed by law to be located in a residential neighborhood and ISOL Inc. failed to comply with sanitary inspection and other procedural and health requirements. In the complaint, Rona filed, she likewise prayed for the issuance of a writ of preliminary injunction to stop the kitchen operations during the pendency of the case. ISOL Inc., in its verified answer, strongly opposed the prayer for the writ of preliminary injunction, considering the huge financial disaster that it will suffer if the writ were to be issued, especially in light of the possibility that the suit can continue to be pending for more than a year. Based on the foregoing, may the writ of preliminary injunction prayed for already be issued. Explain briefly. Our suggested answer, no. The writ of preliminary injunction may not be issued. Complainant Rona did not prove that the intolerable orders from ISOL's chicken operations consist of nuisance per se that can be summarily abated through preliminary injunction. There is no showing that the said order affects the immediate safety of persons and property to be summarily abated as a necessity. 
Kung baga sa ano, kung yan, eh, nuisance per se, maraming tao ang dapat magreklamo. Eh, siya lang naman ang nagre-reklamo, hindi pa niya ipinakita what kind of uh, damage or injury that the odor is causing her. Wala. Sabi lang niya, eh, mabaho eh. Oh, pero yung mabaho relative yun eh nag-iisa lang siya so hindi pwedeng nuisance per se kasi kung nuisance per se marami apektado therefore pwedeng summary abatement pwedeng pa-stop kagad through preliminary injunction pero dahil nag-iisa lang siya uh, hindi yun nuisance per se nuisance per accident yun and so that therefore it will require court trial to determine kung meron talagang damage or injury. And right now, wala nga siyang pinapile na kaso, so there is no basis, uh, uh, meron siyang pinapile na kaso, pero wala naman siyang pinipresent na evidence na yun, nakakasakit ng maraming tao. So this is the case of that the nuisance per se cannot be abated if it is not nuisance per se. And therefore, the preliminary injunction will not be meritorious. Moving now to the two questions on special civil action. The, this is problem number two in the afternoon, no? kaya part two, on the question of declaratory relief. No? In declaratory relief, there is somebody who's trying to ask you to perform something. Uh, no, more so if it is a government uh, regulation. And you are questioning whether that drug regu government regulation should be implemented on you. And so here is now the legality of the real property tax as the subject matter of this declaratory relief. Problem. Fides filed a case before the regional trial court questioning the authority of the local government unit to assess real property taxes on a certain property she owns. She also prayed for a preliminary writ of preliminary injunction to restrain the LGU from collecting the real property tax. The LGU moved to dismiss Fides' case, arguing that since the matter involves real property tax, her remedy was to file an appeal to the local board of assessment appeal, appeals. First question A, is the LGU correct? Explain briefly. And question B, if the RTC issues an order denying the application for a re, uh, writ of preliminary injunction and thereafter denies Fides' subsequent motion for reconsideration, what is her remedy? Explain briefly. This is a little tough, but it can be a part of uh, the task of a new lawyer. No? Dahil uh, maaaring uh, meron ngang taxpayer na binibira ng magbayad ng real property tax. Okay, so the question now will be, letter A, is the LGU correct? The LGU is not correct that the, that the taxpayer is to protest the assessment before the local board of assessment appeals. It is the regional trial court which is the restriction over the legality of the local government to impose the real property tax. Kasi dalawa rito ang, ano eh, ang pwedeng puntahan. Eh. Pag pinag-uusapan yung level of assessment, no, yung, value, yung assess value or yung rate then that can be, uh, th th that particular issue is handled by the Board of Assessment Appeals. May local yun at merong central. Okay. So doon ang usapan. Pero kung ang pinag-uusapan, kinikwestiyon ng taxpayer, may karapatan ba yung municipality or yung city or province to impose a real property tax on me? Eh ako ay exempt under my charter. no? Then hindi na yun Hindi, hindi na yon assessment issue. Yun ang issue legality na on whether that particular taxpayer is bound to pay. And that uh, therefore, that goes to the regular courts for decision making. That is why the LGU is not correct that the taxpayer should protest the assessment because it is not the level of assessment or the, uh, the assessed value. It is the act, the legality of imposing the tax. So, dapat regional trial court. This was decided in the case of ano, ha? T versus Trump case and reiterated 1995 yun in 2014 
in the case of National Power Corporation versus the City of Navotas. Now, question B. If the RTC issues an order denying the application for uh, uh, writ of preliminary injunction and also the motion for reconsideration, what should FIDES do? Suggested answer. Taxpayer FIDES files a petition for review on certiorari under Rule 45 before the CTA. To review and bank the RTC's denial of the petition for declaratory relief with a motion for a writ of preliminary injunction. Yan. Oh. So, takbo ka sa CTA. No? So, from the courts, takbo sa CTA. Hindi pwedeng sa Court of Appeals kasi tinanggal na ngayon yung appeal sa exercise of taxation in favor of the Court of Tax Appeals. Wala na sa Court of Appeals. Pag nanggaling ka naman sa Court of Tax Appeals, hindi ka na dandan sa Court of Appeals, diretso ka na sa Supreme Court if you would like to... Uh, uh, take a review of the decision of the Court of Tax Appeals. Magka-level yung Court of Appeals at Court of Tax Appeals. Kaya lang, specialty uh, appellate court yung CTA. Okay. Next question, under special civil action. This is on the real estate mortgage that is being foreclosed. Okay. This is problem number one in the bar exams. So, ito yung unang-unang masisindak ka. No? Let's take a look. Lebron, a Makati resident obtained 350,000 loan from a bank secured by a real estate mortgage, REM, over his lot located in Quezon City with an assessed value of 500,000 pesos. Lebron failed to pay despite written demands. The bank intends to file an action for judicial foreclosure of the REM. Where should the action for judicial foreclosure of the REM be filed and in which court? Explain briefly. Answer. The judicial foreclosure shall be filed before the Regional Trial Court of Quezon City where the mortgage property is located. The assessed value of the real estate mortgage at 500000 is under the RTC's above 400000 jurisdiction. Ang medyo delikado kung let's say may, may nagsabi ng posisyon na yung loan 350. But here the action is to foreclose. Eh. That is why the, the, the uh, criterion for the exercise of jurisdiction is that the RTC will undertake the judicial foreclosure uh, in the area where uh, the property is located, Quezon City. Pero the assessed value of the real estate property will now guide the jurisdiction, the exercise of jurisdiction of the RTC. At that particular point, uh, we will already use this kasi the bar examination is November 2022. Uh, uh, approved na ito earlier. So this will be the guiding point of the bar examiners in answering. Hindi na pwede yung original 20,000 or 300,000. Okay. So th those are the three questions under provisional remedies and two from, uh, on special civil action. Yun, nakangalahati na tayo dito sa ating roadmap. We will now go to the two problems in special proceedings. <coughs> the first problem on special proceedings is problem number seven in the bar exams on estate settlement. Ownership rights status as legal heir. Ito, Medyo mahirap ng konting tanong, although maikli. And I don't know that this should belong to a fresh lawyer. No? Anyway, ang tanong, is a prior determination of the status as a legal heir in a separate special proceedings a prerequisite to an ordinary civil action seeking the protection and enforcement of ownership rights of such legal heir vested by the law of succession? Mahirap yung tanong. If we were to simplify, ganito lang yun. If you are an heir uh, by reason of the death of your parent, let's say compulsory heir ka, no, at uh, interstate succession, legal succession, no, no, no. and there is somebody claiming title or ownership over the house and lot, which is the family home of your uh, parents, no? Patay na rin na nanay mo, matay tatay mo. So, ang question ngayon is, 
meron nag-aako na sa kanila raw yun, na ibenta sa kanila. Eh ngayon, sabi mo, hindi, amin yan eh. Can you be question na hindi mo pa napapatunayan na ikaw yung ano, dahil hindi pa tapos yung probate proceedings nyo eh, sa interstate succession. So, you cannot yet uh, argue against us. Samantala kami, meron kami deed of sale dito. So, can you be disqualified? Yun ang tanong doon. Dahil hindi ka pa confirm ng court, hindi probate proceedings, as entitled to the owner by inheritance of the property. Ang sagot, magandang tanong yan. In the case of Treyes versus Larlar, an end bank decision on September 2020, bago, the Supreme Court did the opportunity to respond and our suggested answer is no, unless there is a pending special proceedings for the settlement of the decedent's estate or for the determination of heirship the compulsory or interstate heirs may commence an ordinary civil action to declare the nullity of the deed or instrument. We will now move to declare the deed of sale as void, okay? And for recovery of property or any other action in the enforcement of their ownership rights acquired by virtue of succession without the necessity of a prior and separate judicial declaration of their status as such. So kahit hindi ka pa confirm ng court, pero based on the documentation, compulsory air ka, eh di ikaw tagapagmana nun. Eh kinikim mo, ano, ibinenta rin ng tatay nila. Pwede mo na bang labanan kahit wala ka pang personality to, as, as confirm ba compulsory air ka, ikaw na therefore ang may ari. The answer is yes. Dahil according to the concept of uh, succession, Upon the death of the uh, decedent, there is no gap in time in the, in the issue of ownership. Pag namatay yung parent mo at ikaw compulsory, eh, automatic sa pagkamatay niya, owner ka na kagad. Kung nagkataon lang na lima kayong magkakapatid o apat kayo, na maghahati-hati pa kayo, hindi nyo pa nadidesisyonan kung paano hatian. You are all joint owners. Even before you go to court, joint owner ka na agad by operation of law. And so you can already fight anybody who claims ownership. Sama-sama lang kayo. As against, for example, kung nang nagkaroon na ng decree, nagpartition na, apat na lupa yun. No, ngayon, ang kiniklaim yung lupa na napunta sa'yo. No? Therefore, hindi na ngayon kasali yung tatlong kapatid no, na may sarili-sarili na lang sa'yo. Ikaw magkikipaglaban. Pero obvious yun. Kasi you are now the owner. Ang question is, before the partition, kung kayo yung joint owner, pwede yun malabanan. The answer is yes. yes. Okay? That is the issue on problem number seven in the bar on uh, ex estate settlement ownership rights. The next question on special proceedings, the second question, is expected. Ito, ano to? Anticipated ito and uh, everybody is expected to answer this. Problem number eight on foreign divorce. Nam Joon, a Korean national and regime, a Filipina, were married in Makati City on February 14, 2012. Unfortunately, the relationship shortly turned sour and ended with a divorce by mutual agreement in South Korea. The local court in Korea granted the divorce. Wanting to marry her new boyfriend, Tai Yung, Regine filed the petition for recognition of the foreign decree of divorce in the regional trial court of Cebu, uh, where she resides. No? Take note, kinasal sila sa Makati, nagpile sa Cebu. The office of the Solicitor General opposed the petition, contending that the proper remedy is a special proceeding for cancellation or correction of entries in the civil registry under Rule 108 of the Rules of Court, which can only be filed in the RTC of Makati, where the marriage was celebrated and recorded in the Civil Registry of Makati. Is the OHG's contention tenable? Explain briefly. Our suggested answer, no. The OHG's contention is not tenable. Hindi pwede pupunta ka lang dun sa Civil Registry ng Makati at sabihin mo, eh, ito, recognize nyo yung foreign, marry, uh, foreign divorce, hindi na, wala na akong kasal. Hindi pwede yun. Philippine courts must recognize 
In the regular court proceedings, the foreign judgment relating to the status of a marriage, where one of the parties is a citizen of a foreign country. The requisites for recognition of the foreign divorce before Philippine courts include proving 1. The duly authenticated foreign law on divorce. So, dapat ipakita with authenticated translation in English na maintindihan ng court yung foreign divorce of Japan. Kung Japan ito, kung Korea ito, Korea pala. Number two, the divorce decree or order granted by the foreign court in Korea. Number three, the divorce is a fact. No? Talagang naghiwalay. And the divorce conforms to the foreign law allowing divorce. Pag tinumpere mo ngayon yung foreign law, translated already and authenticated in English. Kinumpere mo ngayon yung, yung uh, divorce decree ng Korean court. Tingin mo kung nagmamatch, nagmamatch. Kung nagmatch yun, nasatisfy yung four requirements. And so, the Philippine court now will recognize before Philippine law the foreign divorce that was granted by a Korean court. No? Ngayon, saan ipapile? Hindi po pwedeng sa Cebu. It has to be in Makati because once the issuance of the uh, recognition by the court of the foreign divorce, the registration of that particular uh, foreign divorce will be in the civil registry of the uh, where the marriage was conducted, which is Makati. So, dapat yung Makati court din ang magtry para pagka-issue ng uh, order of uh, recognition of the uh, Korean divorce before Philippine law, pupunta na sa Makati Civil Registry. Eh kung sa Cebu pa yun, di ba? Eh hindi pwedeng doon sa Cebu Civil Registry yun. Okay? So that is the uh, second question on special proceedings. Sorry. And so we go now to our map. Nandito na tayo, pumapasok to tayo sa last 11, ang pinakamarami itong appeal number 8. And if you are tired, you, you can rest. But uh, I think kaya pa naman natin to. So let us go to, prob, uh, to, to module number 8 on appeal. And the first question on appeal are the prescriptive periods on the various appeals. No? So problem number 1, unang-una ito sa afternoon uh, exam. Ask the question, assume that you receive an adverse decision and file the motion for reconsideration which was denied. Give the, reclament, the reglamentary periods for the filing of the following. Letter A, notice of appeal to the Court of Appeals. This is under Rule 41. You have 15 days from RTC or there. Letter B, you now file a petition for certiorari under Rule 65. Under Rule 65, you have 60 days from the judgment or the denial of your motion for reconsideration, whichever comes in later. Letter C, petition for review to the Court of Appeals under Rule 42. Then again, 15 days from the notice of the decision. Letter D, petition for review on certiorari to the Supreme Court under Rule 45. 15 days from notice of judgment or denial of reconsideration. And letter E, petition for certiorari under Rule 64, 30 days from notice of judgment or denial of reconsideration under again Rule 65 of Section 4. It be 64 and 65. Okay, take note, your popular dates will be 15 days. The second one is 60 days, pagka Rule 65, no? yung, yung certiorari. And then ito, certiorari rin uh, under 64, 30 days. So those are the, uh, so a uh, uh, magic number, 15 days. Question uh, number two on appeal. And this is uh, problem number three in the afternoon. Appeal from MTC to RTC. Gail filed a forcible entry complaint against Marianina before the Metropolitan Trial Court. As you know, exclusive jurisdiction and forcible entry and unlawful detainer sa MTC. The MTC ruled in favor of Marianina. Gail appealed the MTC decision to the Regional Trial Court. The RTC denied Gail's appeal and sustained the MTC. Gail then filed a notice of appeal from the RTC indicating 
that it is appealing the artist's decision to the Court of Appeals. In her notice of appeal, Gail also requested the RTC to transmit the records of the case to the Court of Appeals. Did Gail take the correct, uh, the correct mode of appeal? The answer, suggested answer is no. Gail should have filed within 15 days from the notice of the RTC decision or the denial of a motion for reconsideration a verified petition for review with the Court of Appeals. Petition for review with the Court of Appeals. She pays the RTC clerk of court the docket fees and other lawful fees depositing the amount of 500 for costs. She furnishes the regional trial court and the adverse party with a copy of the petition within 15 days short. Gail need not request the RTC to transmit the records to the Court of Appeals. The Court of Appeals may order the RTC clerk concerned for original record of the case within 15 days of notice. So, yun ang magiging sistema. Pag natalo ka sa RTC on appeal, no, takbo ka ngayon sa Court of Appeals no, to file a petition for review. No? And that is under Rule 45. And then, bigyan mo ng kopya yung RTC at yung kalaman mo. And so that therefore, it becomes now the job of the uh, Court of Appeals to order the RTC Clerk of Court to forward the files to them. Okay. Uh, the next question under appeal, problem number four in the afternoon. Filing fee on certiorari, appeal by registered mail. Problem. The regional trial court rendered a decision against CAT. She received a copy of the decision on December 26, 2021. Katz Council filed with the Supreme Court a petition for review on certiorari under Rule 45 by registered mail on January 10, 2022. Natatandaan nyo rito, uh, dahil ito ay eh, tawag dito ay eh, uh, petition for certiorari under Rule 45 eto ay 15 days lang ito eh di ba kaya from december 26 no naiiwan na lang eh 5 days sa ano 5 days sa december kaya january 10 15 days the petition was dismissed for failure to pay the docket fees within the regulatory period cuts council challenged the dismissal arguing that one the intention was to pay the docket fees after the same is assessed upon the court's receipt of the petition by registered mail and two, the dismissal of the petition effectively rendered nugatory a party's statutory right to appeal by registered mail under the rules. Katz counsel also added that she did not want to include cash money in the mail. Is Katz counsel correct? Explain briefly. Our suggested answer. Katz counsel is not correct. Upon filing of the petition for review on certiorari on 10 January 2022, the docket fee should have already been paid at that point. The court cannot acquire jurisdiction over the case's subject matter unless the docket fees are paid within the period to file the petition. You know significance. The, the pay, pay, payment of the docket fee is part of the acquisition of jurisdiction by the Court of Appeals. No? Said fees cannot be assessed and paid after the period of filing. The parties filing by registered mail is irrelevant to the mandatory requirement of paying the docket fees. No? This is based on Rule 42 and decided in the case of Mercado versus Gait Maitan in November of 2004. The next problem under appeal is the matter of arbitration before the Construction Industry Arbitration Board. Problem number five na on the afternoon. In December of 2021, Matibag Realty Corporation and Kasanga Construction Company submitted their construction dispute to arbitration before the Construction Industry Arbitration Commission. In March 2022, the uh, Construction Industry Arbitration Commission Arbitral Tribunal 
rendered an award in favor of Kasanga Construction. What is Matibag Realty Corporation's remedy? Explain briefly. Matibag's Realty's remedy is as follows. Number one is he files with the Supreme Court a petition for review on certiorari under Rule 45 on pure question of law. And so here, because this is a, a construction contract, the law as between the parties would definitely be the construction contract. And if there is now a dispute on how to interpret the provisions of the contract, then that would be a good subject matter for petition for review on certiorari under Rule 45. Not in more, Rule 45. Huh? Normally, Rule 65 lang or Rule, 40, Rule 45 through the Court of Appeals. Dito, derecho. No, yung, yung, yung uh, what, what you call this uh, Construction Industry Arbitration Commission pag hindi ka nag-agree on a question of law takbo ka agad sa Supreme Court the second option would be that uh, Matibag's realty is to file with the Court of Appeals a petition for certiorari under Rule 65 on the issue of one integrity of an arbitral tribunal on the grounds of corruption, fraud, misconduct, evident partiality, incapacity or excess of powers within the tribunal. You are now questioning no, the uh, jurisdiction no, of the uh, construction industry arbitration tribunal no, that there is fraud. There is a, so that is a question of uh, jurisdiction, no grave abuse of discretion, kaya Rule 65 ang, ang, ang gagamitin mo sa Court of Appeals. Or, with the unconstitutionality or legality of its action in the arbitral process, hindi sinusunod yung due process of law. No? Then that one, you can now file a case before the Court of Appeals under Rule 65 on a petition for certiorari. This is based on Executive Order Number 1008, the Law Governing Construction Arbitration, then also consistent with Republic Act 9285, the Alternative Dispute Resolution. It was resolved in the case of Global Medical Center of Laguna versus Raw System International in May of 2021, and also consistent with Republic Act 9184, the Government Procurement Reform Act. The next question on appeal is the annulment of judgment on the basis of fraud. Ito medyo tough ng konti. Problem number six in the afternoon. NISA was defrauded by Jackie, resulting in damages to the former. NISA filed a civil suit before the regional trial court. The RTC dismissed her complaint. Within four years from NISA's discovery of the dismissal of her complaint, she filed through her counsel a petition for annulment of judgment under Rule 47 of the Rules of Court before the Court of Appeals on the ground of fraud. Should the CA give due course to NISA's petition? Explain briefly. Our suggested answer. The Court of Appeals may give due course to NISA's to NISA to annul the judgment when one, the petitioner can no longer resort to ordinary remedies of new trial, appeal, petition for relief, or other appropriate remedies through no fault of the petitioner. Number two, the ground for annulment is extrinsic fraud or lack of jurisdiction. Number three, the action based on extrinsic fraud FIA is filed within four years from the discovery of the extrinsic fraud and before barred by latches or stopel. And number four, the petition is ver as verified, alleging with particularity the facts and the law relied upon for annulment, with evidence or evidences to support the petitioner's good and substantial cause of action or defense. Fraud is extrinsic, which is the basis of uh, filing for the uh, dismissal of the for the petition to annul the judgment. Fraud is extrinsic when the fraudulent scheme of the prevail, prevailing litigant prevented the petitioner from exhibiting fully his case by fraud or deception by his opponent. 
keeping him away from a court, a false promise of a compromise, or where the defendant did not have knowledge of the suit, kept in ignorance by the plaintiffs act, or where an attorney fraudulently or without authority connives at his defeat. So kahit na final and executory yung decision, kung na-discovery nung natalo within four years pra na nadaya siya, pwede pa rin siya mag-file ng petition for annulment or judgment. Next, uh, on uh, appeal, judgment on appeal, only for party appealing when unfavorable. To, to valid ito for a fresh uh, lawyer. Problem number seven in the afternoon. Alex, Bobby, and Gabby were charged with the crime of murder. Finding them to have acted in conspiracy, the regional trial court convicted them of homicide. Only Bobby appealed the conviction with the Court of Appeals. Consequently, an entry of judgment was issued against Alex and Gabby. So si Bobby ayaw niyang pumayag ng homicide. Appeal siya. Gusto niya ma-dismiss yung kaso. Yung dalawa, okay na ng homicide. So hindi na sila nag -appeal. Subsequently, the CA modified Bobby's conviction from homicide to murder. May nakitang aggravating qualifying circumstances. In the same judgment, the CA likewise modified Alex and Gabby's conviction from homicide to murder. Upon learning of the CA's decision, Alex and Gabby confronted Bobby saying, Bakit ka pa nag-appeal? Tumaas tuloy ang sentensya namin na damay pa kami. Bobby snapped back, Bakit? Parang galit pa kayo. Pero bakit kasalanan ko? Parang kasalanan ko. Was the CA correct in modifying the judgment as to Alex and Gabby? Explain briefly. Very beautiful, no? Yung tatlo, yung dalawa, hindi na nagreklamo. Sige na, bitay na ano tayo, mabilang ko ng homicide. Yung isa, hindi, gusto ko libre. Pinanig sa Court of Appeals, hindi lang homicide. Lumala, naging murder, okay? Ngayon, sabi ng Court of Appeals, kayong dalawa rin, magiging murder ang kaso nyo. Tama ba yun? Sabi. Our answer is no. The Court of Appeals is not correct in modifying the judgment of homicide against Alex and Gabby. Yeah, very beautiful. A definitive final judgment is no longer subject to change or revision, becomes immutable and unalterable. Immutability precludes the modification of a final judgment, even if the modification is meant to correct erroneous conclusions of fact and law. The postulate holds true whether the modification is made by the court that rendered it or by the highest court in the land. So ako sa RTC, sabi, taka ba na, nagkamali ako eh, pero final and executory na, hindi na pwedeng bawiin noong trial court. Okay? So dito, uh, hindi na magsisis yan. Itong si, ano, itong si, uh, uh, tawag dito, itong si Gabby, tsaka si Alex, eh, okay na sa homicide. At yung kasama niya nag si Gabby, eh, medyo bibigat, magiging martyr. Now, petition for certiorari versus petition for review on certiorari. Ito problem number 8 in the afternoon. Mayor Dalupan, who was notorious for being involved in rigged public biddings, was convicted by the Sandigan Bayan. In the exercise of its original jurisdiction, for violation of Section 3, Paragraph E, Republic Act 3019, or the Anti-Graft and Corrupt Practices Act. Seeking to overturn his conviction, Mayor Dalupan filed a Rule 65 petition for certiorari before the Supreme Court on the 59th day from notice of the assailed Sandigan Baya ruling. Is the remedy availed of by Mayor Dalupan correct? Explain briefly. No, Mayor Dalupan's remedy, Rule 65 on jurisdiction, is not correct. The correct remedy is petition for review on certiorari under Rule 45 because it is a Sandigan Bayan judgment or final order that is being assailed. The remedy of petition for review under Rule 45 should have been filed 15 days after the Sandigan Bayan's judgment. The same is now prescribed on its 59th day and can no longer be entertained by the uh, uh, Supreme Court. 
And finally, the eighth problem in on appeal. Again, petition for certiorari versus petition for review. Certiorari, insofar as the ombudsman's grave views of discretion versus, versus merits of the case. Police officers, this problem number nine in the afternoon of uh, remedial law. Police officers Migi and Lida were involved in an alleged by-bust operation against Mr. Magtalas, a suspected drug dealer. Mr. Magtalas maintained his innocence, asserting that the drugs were merely planted. Excuse me. He further claimed that he was unjustly beaten by the police officers. Mr. Magtalas filed before the Office of the Deputy Ombudsman for military and other law enforcement officers a criminal complaint for planting evidence. Yun, sinabla niya yung si Migi and Laida, mga police officers, planting evidence, which is punishable under Section 29 of the Dangerous Drugs Act, a criminal case. Mr. Magtalas also filed an administrative complaint for grave misconduct against Migi and Laida in light of the unwarranted physical assault against him. So, administrative. The office of the Ombudsman rendered a decision holding Migi and Laida administratively liable for grave misconduct and accordingly imposed the penalty of dismissal from service. A few weeks later, the OMB issued a separate resolution finding probable cause against them for violation of Section 29 of RA 9165. Aggrieved, Migi and Lida filed before the Supreme Court the following. A. Rule 65 petition for certiorari assailing the OMB's decision finding them uh, administratively liable for grave misconduct and Rule 45 Petition for Review on Certiorari assailing the OMB's resolution finding probable cause against them. Were the remedies availed of by Mige and Lida proper? Explain briefly. This is very interesting. Let us try to see our first answer. No, the Ombudsman's finding of probable cause on the criminal case of planting evidence. Ito, hinabla sila. Sabi, planting evidence. No? Sabi ng ombudsman, uh, may probable cause na nagplant kayo ng evidence. And so that therefore, you are being uh, dismissed. No, you are being dismissed. Uh, Teka mo na. Uh, I stand corrected. You, uh, there is now a case, criminal case against you uh, under the Dangerous Drugs Act. And so sabi ng ob, uh, sabi, uh, well, the remedies of Migi and Lida proper, tama ba na nag-file sila? Anong, anong final nilang kaso dito sa planting evidence? Yung pl planting evidence under uh, number 2, eh, Rule 45, nag-file sila ng petition for review on certiorari. So sabi, no, with the ombudsman's finding of probable cause on the criminal case of planting evidence, the police officer shall file a petition for certiorari under Rule 65. Grave abuse of discretion before the Supreme Court. So dito yon, yung planting evidence na magiging criminal case, sabi nila mayroong probable cause, sabi ng ombudsman. Yahab lang yung ombudsman. No, yung decision ng, uh, na, ano, ng actually na sandigan bayan ito eh. Oo. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Yung ombudsman, hinahabla sila at hinahablan nila yung ombudsman uh, on the finding of probable cause by saying, uh, mali yan eh. We are now file petition for certiorari grave abuse of discretion uh, under Rule 65 no, before the Supreme Court. Okay. Your next question, baba natin ang konting picture natin dito, is yung final nilang kaso na Rule 65 on petition for certiorari under administrative uh, grave misconduct nung binugbog nila. No? Ang sagot dito is this. Uh, no, the correct remedy uh, for the administrative case of physical assault with the, ombud uh, with the ombudsman imposing 
the penalty of dismissal is for the police officers to file a petition for certiorari. Grave abuse of discretion din yung ano, dahil bakit dismissal na? E normally naman, di naman dismissal before the Supreme Court. So, on both cases, papanik sila sa Supreme Court under Rule 65. Dito, yung probable cause, grave abuse of discretion, dito naman, yung uh, physical assault nila, dismissal. Dapat hindi naman dismissal. Okay. This is the case of Yatko versus Ombudsman uh, and under also Section 7, Rule 3 of the Ombudsman's Act. That is the end of our uh, module on appeal. And so, nakatapos na tayo rito. We just have three questions. One on tax remedies. So, tax remedies, injunction versus garrison. This is problem number 10 in the uh, afternoon uh, bar examination on remedial law. Problem. After due proceedings, the Bureau of Internal Revenue issued a final notice and assessment. Sorry. With final letter of demand assessing Coche Corporation for deficiency income taxes covering calendar year 2021, which Coche Corporation duly protested. A month after receipt of the protest, the Commissioner of Internal Revenue issued a notice of garnishment against Coche Corporation's deposit accounts in Getz Bank. If you were counsel for Coche Corporation, what advice would you give to secure an injunction against the notice of garrison? So dito, no, ina-assess ka ng BIR, may final notice of assessment. Bayad ka na, sabi sa'yo. Eh ayaw mo magbayad ngayon. No? Uh, nag-file ka ng protest. Sabi mo, protest ako dyan. No? File ka with the Commissioner of Internal Revenue. You would normally expect that to be resolved in 180 days. Kung within 180 days, hindi enaction na, ibig sabihin, denied. And therefore, you have 30 days to file your uh, case uh, for reversal of that decision with the CTA. Ito, hindi. Nag-file ka ng uh, protest sa BIR, Commissioner. Hindi inaksyonan. Ang ginawa, nag-file ng notice of garnishment. The notice of garnishment is tantamount to denial of your protest. Eh kasi, bakit pa niya sisingiling kung pumapayag siya sa protest mo? Hindi. Ayaw niya sa protest mo. So sabi niya, bayad ka. Nag-issue ng notice of garnishment. So lahat ng mga bank accounts mo, uh, pinasarado. <coughs> Sorry. Ano ngayon ang gagawin mo? No? Yan ang tanong. Okay, so ito na ngayon ang suggested answer natin. My advice as coaches counsel is for the taxpayer to file an urgent appeal. Yan. Dahil dininay na yun nung initial notice of garnishment, that is already a denial of your protest. So what you now file is an urgent appeal within 30 days from the notice of garnishment to the Court of Tax Appeals, assailing the legal and factual basis for the BIR assessment with an omnibus motion. Dapat may omnibus motion ka to lift the BIR's warrant of distraint, levy, and garnishment and a preliminary mandatory injunction for the BIR to desist from collecting the assessed deficiency taxes pending the resolution of your appeal. The CTA may order Koche to deposit the amount of the BIR tax assessment or set up a bond double said amount. Now, uh, unang-una, if you do not file, no, unang una appeal, no, para ang jurisdiction, papanig sa Court of Tax Appeals. Pero merong gray area dito because of the intention that the BIR should not be uh, hampered in trying to collect revenue for the government. Dahil lifeblood dyan ng, ng bayan. Kailangan makolekta. And so the garnishment will continue to exist against your bank accounts no, at lahat ng mga pera mo. So what you do now is when you file the appeal with the Court of Tax Appeals, you also file simultaneously an omnibus motion to lift the BIR warrant of this train. Kasabihin mo ngayon, Mr. Court of Tax Appeals, pakiorderan mo naman yung, ano, yung BIR na ilift yung aking warrant. At mag-issue ka ng preliminary mandatory injunction 
na wag na sila mag-issue yung BIR. Wag na mag-issue ng collection no, ng to assess the deficient tax spending the resolution. Yan ang solution dyan. Oo. Now, the, the question now that is still uh, the subject matter of an issue uh, of the CTA versus the Court of uh, the Supreme Court is this. Kung daw may protesta, dapat daw bang bayaran yung tax uh, under protest no? or deposit uh, it with the uh, CTA or set up a bond double that amount. The Supreme Court is uh, on the side of the taxpayer in saying na bakit naman kailangan bayaran under protest? Nagre-reklamo na nga siya na hindi tama eh. Tapos pababayaran mo sa kanya. Di parang inuna mo na kagad yung ano. Total, if it is supposed to be a deposit or a bond, that will not benefit the government because that will not go into the coffers of government. Nakadeposit to lang doon. At assuming matalo yung taxpayer sa Court of Tax Appeals, eh available naman lahat yung order, uh, uh, order of garnishment and levy ng BIR eh, para stopin yung ano eh. So, the present uh, sentiment now is uh, unless the CTA orders coach it deposit the amount to the BIR on the, BIR, uh, the amount of the BIR tax assessment, normally, pag hindi inutos ng CTA, the, there is no uh, there is there is no need for uh, to deposit the amount of the tax with the TTA. That is the latest uh, decision of the Supreme Court. And uh, finally, two questions on ethics. The first question is the duty to the client. This is problem number 11 in the afternoon. The problem reads, you are the counsel for Bonnie and Clyde who were accused as co-conspirators in a murder case. During arraignment, they both pleaded not guilty. In the course of the trial, uh, Clyde confessed to you that it was actually Bonnie who committed the murder and that he merely helped Bonnie dispose of the body. Clyde tells you that he wants to plead guilty and directs you to inform the prosecution and the judge that he wants to testify against Bonnie as a state witness. Can you continue to represent Bonnie or Clyde or both? Explain briefly. I found this uh, a little difficult and uh, my suggested answer is this. No. The defense counsel cannot represent both Bonnie and Clyde because of their evolving conflicting interests. Si Clyde bumabaligtad na gusto niya wala siyang kasalanan kung hindi tinulungan lang in dispose yung body so at the worst no uh, ano siya uh, accessory after the fact no at hindi siya principal by uh, direct participation kasi dito may lumalabas conspiracy madadamay siya sa ganyan ni ni ano ni, ni Bonnie eh, pero si Bonnie lang naman daw pumatay no and because of that conflicting interest you effectively become part of prosecution as counsel for Bonnie no when he, no, hindi si Bonnie, he will he become uh, Bonnie dispose of the body. Nama. Si, no, si Clyde ito. He become a counsel for Clyde when he turns a state witness. So kalaban mo na ngayon si Bonnie na client mo ngayon. You may even wish and he be continuing to be counsel of both Bonnie and Clyde because your initial legal undertaking allowed you to learn facts including the strong and weak points of both accused that creates a new disadvantage to either or both Bonnie and Clyde. My real suggested solution here, no, to, to if I were to modify this, is I will volunteer to inhibit myself to become counsel of both. Because of the evolving conflicting interests, if I try to become a, the counsel of, uh, what do you call this, of, uh, of, of uh, uh, Bonnie, no? ang mangyayari, titirahin ko na si Clyde na dati ko rin kliyente. And therefore, unfair din ako kasi I learned from both of them the intimate details of the case. So, the better position for me is to really inhibit myself from being counsel for either of them the moment 
one of them turns now state witness. Babaligtad na ngayon yung sitwasyon sa akin. I would rather withdraw. However, if for example, the, uh, itong si uh, si Bonnie, no? Council for Bonnie, if he is the one, si Bonnie yata yun, actually, si Bonnie yung, ano, yung pumatay. So si Clyde yung, yung gusto mag-state witness. Kung bumaligtad si Clyde at become na state witness, I will have to manifest uh, that I am asking the uh, approval of Bonnie to become, to continue to be the uh, counsel for uh, Clyde. And I will, I'm tendering my resignation as his counsel. And my participation in becoming counsel for Clyde would be hit with his approval. Without his approval, I will not be his counsel. I will not also act as counsel for Clyde. That would be a better approach to this whole thing. The second problem on ethics is the lawyer's oath. Ito naman eh, kailangan lang memorize mo yung oath. Ang tanong, identify the five duties of a lawyer as stated in the lawyer's oath. No? And this is the last problem, problem number 12. No? Eh, if you memorize the, uh, the, the oath, it will say, maintain allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines. Number two, support its constitution and obey laws as well as legal orders of the duly constituted authorities. Number three, do, not, do no falsehood nor consent to doing of any in court. Actually, in or out of court. Number four, not wittingly nor willingly promote or sue any groundless, false, or unlawful suit, or give aid nor consent to the same. Delay no man for money or malice. And the fifth one is to conduct oneself as a lawyer according to the best of one's knowledge and discretion with all good fidelity as well as to the courts, as to your clients. So this is the last uh, problem, problem number 27, in the November 2022 remedial law. And this is the last problem in ethics. And so therefore, this essentially ends up our 27 questions, suggested answers in the bar examination. And uh, I'd like to, of course, thank you uh, for the past uh, almost two years, almost one year now, no? almost two years now, where many of you have been following my YouTube uploads. Kasalanan ko lang, hindi ko pa nalilinis yung aking uh, uh, connection or linkage with YouTube. Hindi pa ako nababayaran kahit magkano in all of those uh, uh, uploads. Marami-rami na rin. No? Uh, somewhere along the line, I remember... Uh, enjoying about 17,000 viewers in one slide. Very popular dyan, yung uh, train law in taxation, yung property, no, nakakagulat, no? And uh, itong mga ano to, itong mga suggested answers. So I'd like to thank you very much, and uh, I am not decided yet on whether to upload civil law or not, kasi meron nang nauna sumagot ng civil law. Nakakaya naman baka akala eh sabihin kinopya ko lang. But uh, the, uh, the question on uh, whether or not the uh, daughter-in-law, number one question yata ito, who did not bring his son the birthday party sponsored by the grandmother. Ang sagot ng isa ay may liability. Ang sagot ko wala. And so therefore I am also his son. But I may take the courage to also answer uh, uh, what you call this, the question on uh, civil law. If that is the only reason why I will hesitate to answer. But uh, I promise the one who prepared that three days after the bar exam that tinignan ko lang yung mga tatlong suggestions, answers niya dun sa harap. Pero in fairness, hindi ko na pinakinggan yung iba. Then, alam ko naman tama yung mga sagot niya. So with this, I'd like to thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, Dinjo Santos Balagtas Biskera. Today is January 2, 2023. Nakatawid na tayo sa 2023. Uh, it is now uh, 40 minutes past 8 o'clock in the evening. I'd like to thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, share with you my suggested answers 
on remedial law, taxation, and legal ethics. Marami pong salamat.